Did you know Kim Jong-un owns a fleet of luxury yachts worth over $100 million? Yeah, that's right. The leader of one of the poorest countries in the world cruises around in style while his people struggle to eat. But that's nothing compared to his car collection. We're talking custom-made Mercedes limos, Maybachs, and even a gold-plated Rolls-Royce. This guy's garage is worth more than most people will see in a lifetime. From poverty to prosperity, Kim's unlikely rise. You won't believe where Kim Jong-un started out. When he took over North Korea in 2011, the country was seriously broke. We're talking one of the poorest nations on earth with most people struggling just to eat. But Kim, he had other plans. This guy wasn't about to live like his people. Nah, he wanted the good life and he didn't care how he got it. So what did he do? Kim went full on gangster mode. He started running drugs and weapons on the down low, making bank while keeping it all hush hush. But that wasn't enough for Kim. He wanted more, faster. So he came up with a crazy scheme, printing fake money. Yeah, you heard that right. Kim had his own counterfeit cash operation going, pumping out millions in fake bills to fund his lavish lifestyle. While his people were starving, Kim was living it up. He was throwing wild parties, buying fancy cars, and eating like a king, all on the back of illegal weapons, drugs, and fake cash. Talk about a shady come up. Before long, Kim was rolling in more money than he knew what to do with. We're talking billions here. Yeah, billions with a B. This guy went from leading a broke country to being one of the richest dudes on the planet. All while his people were still eating grass to survive. But how'd he spend all that cash? Oh man, you ain't seen nothing yet. Kim went on a spending spree that'd make even the craziest billionaires blush. We're talking gold-plated everything, private islands, and toys that'd make James Bond jealous. Kim's got a whole fleet of luxury cars, each one worth more than most people make in a lifetime. He's got mansions scattered all over North Korea, complete with underground bunkers and their own train stations. This guy even built himself a private ski resort, cause why not when you're that rich? But cars and houses are just the start. Kim's got a thing for bling too. His watch collection alone is worth more than some small countries. And don't even get me started on his yachts. This guy's got floating palaces that'd make even the biggest ballers feel poor. The craziest part? Kim keeps most of this stuff hidden. He's got a whole team dedicated to smuggling luxury goods into North Korea. They're bringing in everything from fancy cars to the latest tech, all while the average North Korean can barely afford a bicycle. So how'd Kim go from broke dictator to secret billionaire by breaking every rule in the book and not giving a damn about his people? While North Koreans starve, Kim's living like a god. It's a wild ride from rags to riches and Kim's showing no signs of slowing down. But trust me, we're just getting started. Wait till you see what else this guy's got hidden away. Kim's garage, a billionaire's car collection. Remember those billions Kim was stacking? Well, a good chunk of that cash went into creating the world's most secretive and outrageous car collection. We're talking gold-plated Rolls Royces and bulletproof Mercedes that cost more than entire neighborhoods. But the real kicker, these aren't just status symbols, they're evidence of a massive criminal operation. Kim's garage is like something out of a Bond villain's lair. He's got custom Mercedes limos that are longer than some people's houses. These ain't your average stretch limos either. They're decked out with flat-screen TVs, minibars, and even conference rooms. Kim's basically got a mobile office that's worth more than most people make in a lifetime. But the Mercedes are just the start. Kim's also got a gold Rolls-Royce Phantom. Cause why not when you're a dictator with billions to burn? This thing is so blinged out it'd make a rapper blush. We're talking solid gold trim, custom leather seats, and a hood ornament that's probably worth more than your car. Now here's where it gets really crazy. All these luxury rides, they're totally illegal in North Korea. Kim's got a whole team of smugglers working around the clock to get these cars into the country. They're using fake paperwork, bribes, and who knows what else to slip these multi-million dollar whips past customs. And it ain't just about looking flashy. Kim's paranoid as hell, so he's got a fleet of bulletproof BMWs too. These things could probably survive a rocket attack. They've got reinforced panels, run flat tires, and windows thicker than your arm. Kim's not taking any chances when he's cruising through Pyongyang. The craziest part? This is just what we know about. Experts think Kim's got way more cars hidden away that we haven't even seen yet. We're talking rare vintage rides, one-of-a-kind customs, and prototypes that aren't even on the market yet. So what's the total value of Kim's car collection? Buckle up, cause it's insane. 
We're looking at over $20 million easy, and that's probably lowballing it. Some estimates put it closer to $50 million when you factor in all the secret rides and custom work. But here's the thing, cars are just the tip of the iceberg for Kim. This guy's got a whole fleet of other rides that'll blow your mind. We're talking about private jets, yachts, and even a luxury train that's like a five-star hotel on wheels. Kim's not just flexing on the streets, he's balling out on land, sea, and air. Sky-high luxury, Kim's private jets and helicopters. You thought Kim's car collection was wild? Well, his air game is even crazier. Kim doesn't just ball out on the ground, he owns the skies too. This guy's got a Boeing 747 that's basically a flying palace. We're talking bedrooms, conference rooms, and even a gym. Yeah, you heard that right. Kim's working out at 30,000 feet while his people can barely afford food. But one jet ain't enough for Kim. He's got a whole fleet of smaller planes too. This guy's treating planes like most people treat shoes. He's got one for every occasion. Need to make a quick trip? Hop in the Gulf Stream. Wanna bring the whole squad? Fire up the Illusion. Kim's always ready to fly no matter what. And helicopters? Kim's got those too, like 100 of them. He uses these to zip around North Korea like it's his backyard. While most North Koreans can't even leave their town, Kim's flying over the whole country whenever he feels like it. He's got military choppers, luxury choppers, even some that are basically flying limos. Kim's Boeing 747 is the real showstopper though. This thing's got more bling than a rapper's jewelry collection. The interior's all decked out in white leather and gold trim. There's a master bedroom with a king-size bed, cause Kim needs his beauty sleep even at 35,000 feet. The conference room's got a massive TV and satellite phone, so Kim can keep tabs on his dictatorship even when he's in the air. But the craziest part, the plane's got its own missile defense system. Yeah, Kim's so paranoid he's ready for a dogfight at any moment. The whole jet's hardened against EMPs too, in case anyone tries to fry the electronics. It's like a Bond villain's escape plane, but in real life. The cost of all this? We're talking hundreds of millions easy. Each of those choppers costs a few million. And the Boeing 747? That's a cool $200 million before all the custom work. Add in maintenance, fuel, and crew, and Kim's burning through cash faster than his jets burn jet fuel. But here's the kicker. All this luxury is happening while most North Koreans are struggling to eat. Kim's flying around in a gold-plated jet while his people can barely afford bicycles. It's like two different worlds existing in the same country. And get this, Kim's not content with just planes and choppers. He's even got his own private train, decked out like a luxury hotel on wheels. This thing's got bulletproof carriages, flat-screen TVs, and even a lobster tank. Cause nothing says man of the people like eating fresh lobster while your country starves, right? But Kim's just getting started. All these fancy rides? They're just how he gets to his real palaces. Wait till you see where he lives. Mansions fit for a dictator, Kim's lavish homes. Kim's got houses all over North Korea and they're ridiculous. We're not talking about your average McMansions here. This guy's got palaces that make Buckingham look like a studio apartment. His main crib in Pyongyang, it's basically a small city. We're talking 1,000 rooms, underground bunkers, the works. This place is so big, Kim probably needs a map just to find the bathroom. But that's not enough for Kim. He's got beach houses too, cause every dictator needs a vacation spot, right? One of his seaside mansions has its own train station. Yeah, you heard that right. Kim's got a private railway just to get to his beach house. Most people take an Uber, Kim takes a whole train. And don't forget the ski resort he built just for himself. While most North Koreans can barely afford food, Kim's shredding powder on his private slopes. This place has got everything. Luxury hotels, ski lifts, even a helipad. Cause why drive to your private ski resort when you can fly? Kim's properties are spread out all over North Korea. He's got mansions in the mountains, by the sea, even on private islands. Each one's decked out with the latest tech, fancy furniture, and enough security to make Fort Knox look like a 7-Eleven. His main palace in Pyongyang is the real showstopper though. This place has got everything. Indoor swimming pools, movie theaters, even a water park. Yeah, Kim's got his own water park, while his people can barely get clean drinking water. The contrast is insane. The security at these places is next level too. We're talking armed guards, attack dogs, even anti-aircraft guns. Kim's so paranoid he's ready for World War III to break out at any moment. His bunkers are like something out of a sci-fi movie. They could probably survive a nuclear blast. So what's the total value of all these properties? 
buckle up because it's crazy. We're talking billions, easy. Some experts think Kim's real estate empire is worth over $4 billion. That's more than the GDP of some small countries. But here's the kicker. All this luxury is happening while most North Koreans live in poverty. Kim's living in billion-dollar mansions while his people struggle to afford basic necessities. It's like two different worlds existing in the same country. And get this, Kim's not content with just living large on land. Nah, this guy's got some serious water toys too. We're talking luxury yachts that are basically floating palaces, but that's a whole other story. Sailing in style, Kim's luxury yacht collection. You thought Kim's land game was wild? Wait till you see what he's got floating on the water. This guy's yacht collection makes the average millionaire's boat look like a rubber ducky. We're talking floating palaces that'll blow your mind. Kim's got this crazy 95-foot luxury yacht that's basically a mansion on water. This thing is decked out with gold-plated bathrooms, marble floors, and probably more bling than most jewelry stores. The interior's all fancy wood paneling and leather seats. It's like a five-star hotel, but it floats. But one yacht ain't enough for Kim. Nah, this dude's got a whole fleet. He's got speedboats for zipping around, party boats for throwing wild bashes, and even some old-school wooden boats for when he's feeling fancy. It's like he's trying to build his own navy, but for partying instead of war. Kim loves throwing insane parties on these boats. We're talking celeb guests, fancy champagne, the works. While most North Koreans can't even afford a decent meal, Kim's out here popping bottles with basketball stars and movie actors on his million-dollar yachts. And get this, Kim's got a bunch of jet skis and speedboats to go with his yachts. Cause why have a super expensive boat if you can't zoom around it on even more expensive toys, right? This guy's spending millions just so he can play in the water while his people can barely afford clean drinking water. The craziest part? All these boats are totally illegal in North Korea. Kim's got a whole team of smugglers working overtime just to get these floating palaces into the country. They're using fake papers, secret harbors, the works. It's like a James Bond movie but with yachts instead of spy gadgets. So what's the total cost of all Kim's water toys? Hold on to your hat, cause it's insane. We're talking over $100 million easy. That's more money than most people will see in a hundred lifetimes, all spent on boats that most North Koreans will never even get to see. But here's the thing, boats are just the start for Kim. This guy's spending habits are so wild, it makes his yacht collection look cheap. He's got a thing for bling that'll make your eyes water. We're talking watches worth more than houses, diamonds bigger than golf balls. Kim's jewelry game is so crazy it deserves its own story. Kim's insane jewelry collection. Think Kim's yacht collection was wild? His jewelry stash is on a whole other level. We're talking bling so insane, it makes those boats look like cheap toys. Kim's wrist game alone is worth more than some small countries. This guy's got a watch collection that'd make Swiss bankers jealous. We're not talking about your average Timex here, nah. Kim's rocking custom Rolexes, Patek Philippe's and basically every other fancy watch brand you can think of. Each one of these bad boys is worth more than most people's houses. But the real showstopper in Kim's watch collection, a solid gold Movado that weighs as much as a newborn baby. Yeah, you heard that right. This thing is so heavy, Kim probably needs to hit the gym just to lift his arm when he's wearing it. It's like he saw a normal watch and thought, nah, not flashy enough, make it solid gold and heavy as a brick. And don't even get me started on the diamonds. Kim's got so many ice cubes, you'd think he was trying to start his own glacier. We're talking diamonds bigger than golf balls, necklaces that could probably be seen from space, and rings that look like they could knock someone out. Kim's not just buying this stuff off the rack either. He's got a team of jewelers working around the clock to make custom pieces just for him. Want a pair of diamond-encrusted sunglasses? Kim's got them. How about a gold chain so big it needs its own security detail? Yep, he's got that too. But here's the craziest part. All this bling is worth over $100 million. That's right, Kim's walking around with the GDP of a small nation on his wrists and neck. While most North Koreans are struggling to afford food, their leader is dripping in diamonds worth more than they'll see in a hundred lifetimes. And get this. Kim's not content with just wearing his jewelry. He's got a whole vault full of the stuff that he never even touches. It's like he's building his own Fort Knox, but instead of gold bars, it's all Rolexes and diamond rings. Kim's jewelry obsession goes beyond just personal style too. He uses these flashy pieces as gifts to buy loyalty from his inner circle. Nothing says thanks for not overthrowing me like a million dollar watch, right? But here's the thing. 
Kim's bling collection is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to his crazy spending habits. This guy's got a thing for collecting that goes way beyond jewelry. We're talking about art that's worth more than some countries' entire economies. But that's a whole other story. Art of the Deal, Kim's Billion Dollar Art Collection. Ever wonder what a dictator does with unlimited cash? Kim Jong-un's latest obsession makes his diamond-encrusted watches look like chump change. He's got a team scouring the globe for treasures, and some say they're not playing by the rules. But the real shocker, it's all about feeding Kim's massive ego. Kim's not just hoarding gold and fancy cars. Nah, this guy's gone full-on art collector mode. We're talking a personal stash worth billions. Yeah, that's billions with a B. While most North Koreans can barely afford food, Kim's dropping serious cash on paintings, sculptures, and ancient artifacts. His collection is next-level crazy. We're talking rare masterpieces that museums would kill for. Kim's got paintings from famous European artists, ancient Asian scrolls, and sculptures that are older than his whole country. This dude's turned his palaces into private museums that'd make the Louvre jealous. But here's the wild part. Kim's got a whole team dedicated to building his art empire. These guys travel the world, hitting up auctions and private sales, always on the hunt for the next big score. They're like art ninjas, swooping in to grab priceless pieces before anyone else can get them. Now, some people say Kim's collection ain't all legit. There's rumors floating around that some of his art might be stolen. We're talking pieces that disappeared from museums or private collections suddenly popping up in Kim's hands. But who's gonna call him out? The guy's got nukes. Kim's favorite piece in his billion dollar collection? It ain't no Picasso or Van Gogh. Nah, it's a portrait of himself made of solid gold. Yeah, you heard that right. Kim's got a golden selfie worth millions hanging on his wall. Talk about narcissism on a whole new level. The craziest part? Experts think Kim's art collection is worth over one billion dollars. That's more than the entire economy of some small countries. While his people struggle to get by, Kim's sitting on a fortune in fancy paintings and old statues. But Kim's not content with just buying other people's art. He's got this weird thing about making his own propaganda pieces too. We're talking giant statues of himself and his family, murals that cover entire buildings, all celebrating how great he is. It's like he's trying to turn the whole country into his personal art gallery. Kim's art obsession goes beyond just collecting too. He's always commissioning new pieces, like paintings of himself doing heroic stuff that never happened. There's even rumors he's got a team of artists working around the clock, just cranking out pictures of him looking all powerful and important. Baller hobbies, Kim's expensive pastimes, Kim Jong-un's hobbies are as wild as his spending habits. This guy doesn't just collect fancy cars and watches, he's got some seriously expensive pastimes that'll blow your mind. First up, basketball. Kim's obsessed with the sport. He's built multiple NBA-style courts across North Korea, complete with imported hardwood floors and pro-level equipment. But he ain't just playing pickup games. Kim's got his own personal team of trainers and coaches, flown in from around the world to help him work on his jump shot. The cost of these courts and staff? Millions easy. But Kim's hoop dreams don't stop there. He's got a massive collection of NBA memorabilia, including game-worn jerseys from stars like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Each of these pieces is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Kim's even got a set of gold-plated basketball hoops in one of his palaces. Cause why play like a pro when you can play like a king, right? When he's not on the court, Kim's chilling in his personal movie theater. But this ain't your average home cinema setup. Kim's got a collection of every film ever made. Yeah, you heard that right. Every single movie. He's got a team dedicated to tracking down rare and unreleased films from around the world. The theater itself is decked out with leather recliners, a state-of-the-art sound system, and a screen bigger than most houses. But movies and basketball are just the start. Kim's got a thing for horses, too. He owns a stable of purebred horses worth millions. We're talking champion racehorses, rare breeds, you name it. Each of these horses is worth more than most people make in a lifetime. And of course, Kim's got a team of expert trainers and vets to keep his equine friends in top shape. Now here's where it gets really crazy. Kim's got his own personal theme park. Yeah, a whole amusement park just for him and his buddies. We're talking roller coasters, Ferris wheels, the works. This place is like Disneyland, but with more armed guards and way less Mickey Mouse. The cost of building and maintaining this private playground, hundreds of millions easy. But Kim ain't content with just one theme park. He's got smaller amusement parks scattered across his various properties. 
One of his beach houses has its own water park, complete with slides and wave pools. Another spot's got a mini golf course with gold-plated clubs. It's like Kim's trying to build his own version of Las Vegas, but without the pesky tourists. The total cost of all these hobbies? It's hard to pin down an exact number, but we're talking hundreds of millions, maybe even billions. While most North Koreans can barely afford food, their leader is dropping cash on basketball courts and roller coasters like it's nothing. Fashion dictator, Kim's designer wardrobe. Think Kim's car collection was wild? Wait till you see his wardrobe. This guy's fashion game is next level, and he's spending millions to look like a billion bucks. Kim's suits ain't your average off-the-rack stuff. Nah, he's got them all custom-made by the world's top designers. We're talking $10,000 suits, and he's got hundreds of them. That's more money hanging in his closet than most people make in a year. But Kim ain't stopping at just one or two fancy suits. He's got a different designer outfit for every day of the year, and then some. But the real flex? Kim's shoe game. This dude's got a thing for handmade Italian leather. Each pair costs more than a car, and he's got enough to open his own shoe store. Kim's probably never worn the same pair twice. While most North Koreans can barely afford a pair of sandals, their leaders strutting around in shoes worth more than their houses. And don't even get me started on Kim's sunglasses collection. This guy's got over 1,000 pairs. Yeah, you heard that right. A thousand different ways to hide his eyes from his starving people. He's got every brand you can think of. Gucci, Prada, Ray-Ban, and probably some you've never even heard of. Kim's spending more on shades than some countries spend on healthcare. But Kim ain't just about designer labels, he's all about the bling too. Every outfit's dripping with gold chains, diamond rings and watches that cost more than yachts. Kim's jewelry collection is worth millions on its own and he wears it like it's no big deal. This guy's got more ice than the North Pole and he ain't afraid to show it off. So what's the total value of Kim's wardrobe? Hold on to your hats cause it's insane. We're talking tens of millions easy. That's right. Kim's clothes are worth more than most people will see in 10 lifetimes. While his people are wearing rags, Kim's decked out in outfits that could feed a whole city. But here's the crazy part. All this designer gear is totally illegal in North Korea. Kim's got a whole team of smugglers working overtime just to get his fancy threads into the country. They're using fake papers, secret shipments, the works. It's like a spy movie, but for fashion instead of state secrets. Traveling in style, Kim's Lux Transportation. While Kim's wardrobe is fit for a king, his transportation takes luxury to a whole new level. Ever wondered how a dictator travels? It's not just first class, it's a mobile palace that puts Air Force One to shame. Kim's got this crazy private train that's basically a hotel on wheels. This thing's bulletproof and decked out with every luxury you can imagine. We're talking flat screen TVs, conference rooms, and even a lobster tank. Yeah, Kim needs his fresh seafood, even when he's cruising through the countryside. But the wildest part, Kim's got his own personal escalator to get on and off the train. Cause why walk upstairs like a peasant when you can ride in style? This escalator's probably worth more than most people's houses. Now trains are cool and all, but they're kinda slow. So when Kim needs to move fast, he's got a whole fleet of armored Mercedes. These ain't your average luxury cars. They're custom made, bulletproof, and worth millions each. Kim's basically riding around in a tank that's fancier than most people's dream homes. And get this. Kim's Mercedes are so tricked out, they've got their own oxygen supplies. Yeah, in case of a gas attack or something. Paranoid much? But I guess when you're a dictator, you can never be too careful. But Kim ain't just bawling out on land. For sea travel, he's got this insane 95-foot luxury yacht. It's like a floating mansion, complete with gold-plated bathrooms and a party deck. While most North Koreans can barely afford a fishing boat, their leader's cruising around in a ship that's nicer than most hotels. So what's the total cost of all Kim's fancy rides? Hold on to your hats, cause it's crazy. We're talking hundreds of millions easy. That's more money than most people will see in a hundred lifetimes, all spent on ways for Kim to get from A to B in style. But here's the wildest part. All this luxury travel happens while most North Koreans can barely afford a bicycle. Kim's zipping around in million-dollar cars and trains while his people are walking or riding donkeys. It's like two different worlds existing in the same country. And get this, Kim's not content with just having the fanciest rides. He's always looking for ways to make his travel even more luxurious. There's rumors he's trying to build his own private airport, complete with a golden runway. Cause why land on regular tarmac when you can touch down on solid gold, right? But Kim's crazy spending doesn't stop at travel. This guy's got a food budget that'll make your jaw drop. 
we're talking millions spent on fancy cheese, expensive wine, and food flown in from all over the world. But that's a whole other story. Feast fit for a king, Kim's insane food budget. Ever wondered what a dictator eats for breakfast? For Kim Jong-un, it ain't your average bowl of cereal. His daily menu costs more than most people make in a year. And that's just the appetizer of this crazy food story. Kim's food budget is so wild, it makes his million dollar cars look cheap. This guy spends millions every year just on fancy cheese. Yeah, you heard that right. While most North Koreans are struggling to eat, Kim's chowing down on cheese that costs more than houses. But the cheese is just the start. Kim's got a thing for expensive wine too. We're talking $1,000 bottles with every meal. That's more cash than most people spend on groceries in a month. And Kim's drinking it like it's water. His wine cellar's probably worth more than some countries. Kim ain't cooking all this fancy food himself, though. Nah, he's got a whole team of personal chefs from all over the world. These guys are like the Avengers of cooking, specially picked to make Kim's meals perfect every time. They're whipping up dishes most people only see on TV, and Kim's eating them every day. And get this, Kim's so obsessed with fresh food, he flies in sushi from Japan every week. While his people are eating rice and vegetables, Kim's munching on tuna that was swimming in the ocean like 12 hours ago. The cost of these sushi shipments alone is probably more than most North Koreans make in a year. But the craziest part of Kim's food habits? His cognac addiction. This dude spends millions every year on fancy French booze. He's got bottles that cost more than cars, and he drinks them like they're soda. Some say he spends more on cognac than some countries spend on education. So what's the total damage of Kim's insane food habits? Hold on to your forks, cause it's nuts. We're talking over $30 million a year, easy. That's more than the GDP of some small countries, all spent on food and drinks for one guy. But here's the real kicker. All this crazy food spending is happening while most North Koreans can barely afford to eat. Kim's feasting on caviar and lobster while his people are struggling to get by on rice and vegetables. It's like he's living in a different world from the rest of the country. And Kim ain't just eating all this fancy food by himself. Nah, he loves to show off with crazy parties too. We're talking bashes that make Hollywood premieres look like kids' birthday parties. But that's a whole other story. Kim's food habits are so wild it's hard to believe they're real. But this is just how he eats. Wait till you hear about how he parties. This guy's taking eat, drink, and be merry to a whole new level. And the bill is more than most of us will see in a lifetime. Party like a dictator. Kim's insane celebrations. Kim ain't just eating fancy, he's partying like the world's ending tomorrow. We're talking celebrations that make Hollywood look cheap. But there's one party detail so wild, it'll make your jaw drop. Remember when you were a kid and wanted a clown for your birthday? Kim's like, hold my cognac. This guy once flew in an entire circus for his birthday bash. Yeah, you heard that right, a whole circus. While most North Koreans can't even afford a cake, Kim's got acrobats and elephants at his parties. But that's nothing compared to his fireworks shows. Kim's dropping millions on displays that light up the whole country. We're talking explosions you can see from space. It's like the 4th of July New Year's and Diwali all rolled into one. And he does this stuff all the time, not just for special occasions. Kim's got a thing for jet ski shows too, cause why watch TV when you can have people doing tricks on water right outside your window? He's got a whole team of pro riders on call, ready to put on a show whenever he feels like it. It's like having your own personal water circus. But the craziest part of Kim's party game, his private island bashes with celebs. While his people can barely leave their towns, Kim's flying in movie stars and athletes for wild parties on secret islands. We're talking A-list guests, champagne waterfalls, the works. It's like a music video come to life, but with more dictators and fewer cameras. And get this. Kim's got a whole team just to plan these insane parties. These guys are like party ninjas, working around the clock to make sure every bash is crazier than the last. They're flying in rare foods, setting up crazy light shows, and probably trying to figure out how to make it rain gold or something. So what's the damage for one of Kim's parties? Hold on to your party hats, cause it's nuts. We're talking millions easy, maybe even tens of millions for the really big ones. That's more cash than most people see in a lifetime, all blown on a single night of partying. But here's the thing, all this crazy partying has a dark side, and it ain't pretty. While Kim's living it up with circus animals and jet ski shows, most North Koreans are struggling to get by. It's like two different worlds existing in the same country. 
Kim's pop in bottles worth more than houses while his people can barely afford rice. And it gets even messier. Some of the celebs who show up at Kim's parties, they catch heat back home for hanging out with a dictator. But the allure of these insane bashes is too much for some stars to resist. It's like Vegas on steroids but with more nukes and fewer paparazzi. Kim's parties are so over the top they're almost hard to believe, but this is just how he rolls. While most of us are happy with a cake and some balloons, Kim's out here making Gatsby look like an amateur. It's a wild world out there, and Kim's parties are proof that absolute power and unlimited cash make for some seriously insane celebrations. The Dark Side of Wealth – Kim's Controversial Spending All that glitters ain't gold in Kim's world. Behind the fancy cars and million-dollar parties, there's a dark side that'll make your skin crawl. While Kim's living it up like a rap star, his people are facing a reality so harsh it's almost unbelievable. Kim's wealth comes at a hefty price, and it ain't his wallet that's hurting. Nah, it's the North Korean people who are paying for his lavish lifestyle. While Kim's chowing down on imported caviar, most North Koreans are struggling to put food on the table. We're talking about a country where people are literally eating grass to survive. Yeah, it's that bad. But Kim don't care. He's too busy spending billions on nukes and missiles. That's right, billions. While his people can't afford basic necessities, Kim's out here playing real-life Rocket League. He's got more weapons than some countries have schools. It's like he's preparing for World War III while his country's stuck in the Stone Age. And if you think that's messed up, wait till you hear about the concentration camps. Yeah, Kim's got those too. While he's lounging in his gold-plated mansion, Thousands of North Koreans are locked up in these brutal prisons. We're talking about places where people are worked to death, tortured, and starved. It's like something out of a horror movie, but it's real life for many North Koreans. But does any of this slow down Kim's spending? Hell no. This guy keeps flexing his wealth like there's no tomorrow. He's buying up luxury goods faster than you can say human rights violation. Some say he's got secret bank accounts all over the world, stashing away billions while his country crumbles. The contrast between Kim and his people is so shocking, it's hard to wrap your head around. Imagine living in a country where the leader has a gold-plated toilet while you're struggling to find clean water. That's the reality in North Korea. Kim's out here living like a god while his people are barely surviving. But despite all the suffering he's causing, Kim keeps on spending. He's like a kid in a candy store, but the candy costs millions and his allowance is an entire country's GDP. There's no sign of him slowing down either. Every time you think he can't possibly buy anything crazier, he proves you wrong. The craziest part? Kim's got this whole propaganda machine working overtime to make him look like a hero. While he's sipping champagne on his luxury yacht, state TV is showing him inspecting factories and farms. It's like he's living in his own personal Marvel movie, but the bad guy somehow convinced everyone he's the hero.